Welcome to Marriage and Life Stories with Kansime, a show on family television where we discuss uh, marriage-related uh, conversations, where we talk about building strong homes, where we talk about children and their upbringing in their homes, and generally managing our health with natural remedies in this show. My name is Grace Kansime, uh, presenting the show to you. Today we are looking at a scenario where marriage is on the rocks, okay? And this man loved you so much, he married you, you are in the home, you are dreaming about these things, and then all of a sudden there is no love anymore. He no longer calls you like he used to call you, she no longer respects you like she used to, I know there are some girls who, who would come to people's houses and, you know, they clean up, they sweep, they wash the clothes. And even before they get married, they do all these things and they make sure that the environment they leave behind is like, wow, she is the one. And then she doesn't talk on the phone when you're talking. She dresses decently, puts in every effort when she's coming to see you. And then when she's married, she doesn't care anymore. She will dress in bras which are torn, the undies are torn, underwears are torn, you know, they've changed the colors, and the dresses are just to whoever it may concern. And this person lives a life that the man can no longer be proud of. Now remember when a man marries a wife, he's looking at someone he can show off, someone he can be very proud about. And when that ceases to be the case, then, I am sorry, the man will lose interest. And then the men also, they used to put in a lot of effort. They used to buy gifts, okay? They would make those phone calls. They would try and make sure that you are okay in every circumstance and in every environment. And then you're married and the things stop. And then children come in. You know the person who used to care so much when you're pregnant, took care of you, he would do so many things for you, and now the child has come and he runs out of the house. And at the end of it all, the discussion in the house, or what should be the conversation, becomes an, interrog an inter interrogation. It is a question and answer session in this marriage. And so what do we do? Because if we do not do anything at this point, the communication is broken, there is no affection in the marriage, there is no conversation, what is coming next will be either um, emotional disconnection completely or it can even be physical disconnection where the man goes cheating and the wife goes her way and the marriage is no more and the children suffer. So what do we do to bring this marriage back from the rocks to that comfortable position where the two of you can build this relationship? Now remember, when you're getting married, it's not, um, you did not get married to be in a war zone. Marriage is never meant to be a war zone. It is meant to be interesting. It is meant to be a position of safety. It is meant to be a position of sharing where husbands and wives, they share their love, they share their resources they, with each other. They also share with their children if God has blessed them and they also share with the rest of the world. Now, if that sharing, if that comfort, the security, the love position is no longer there and you finally find yourself on the rocks, what should you do? Number one, the most important thing is check yourself. If you're a man, check yourself. If you're a woman, check yourself. And what should you check for? Now, if you are going to be loving, then you must have enough love within you. If you check yourself and you find that love for yourself is no longer there, then you have nothing to offer your spouse. There is nothing you can give the other person if you cannot love yourself enough. 
I have seen ladies crying and whining. Oh, he doesn't love me. He doesn't care about me. Then they stop dressing well. Then they stop taking care of themselves. They are busy crying because the man doesn't love them any, anymore. Now let me assure you, men do not just love anyhow. They get attracted to what they see. What is it that you're showing this gentleman? Now ladies, Women do not love a man who has no confidence. The moment you are not confident and you're busy crying about uh, who she's talking about with on the phone, uh, who did she call, you're busy snipping around her phone, she will not love you. And that will be the, the position of a rock in your relationship. Build your love in yourself first. First of all, you are a, a, a wonderfully and, you know, miraculously created person in the image of God. That should be your first position to love yourself. And so when you love yourself, then think about those other things that you'd want some other person to do for you. You want someone to give you peace? First give yourself peace. You want someone to pamper you? First pamper yourself. Now when you are at that position of comfort with yourself, what you are full of will overflow and go to another person. You cannot be a person who doesn't feel you are good enough and then you expect another person to come and see good in you. Let me pick it from the ladies. You'll meet a lady who has eaten and does not exercise and she's so indisciplined with her life and she has grown fat, the stomach is there, you know, everything has gone to wherever it may concern. And then, when the man says, you are growing fat, that will be a point of fighting. I mean, he just said the truth. I remember at some point I used to be so big. You know, like so big and my dress sizes, whenever I went to the shops and they would tell me that my dress size is not there, you know, they would come and say, oh, madam, we don't have your size. So I would come back home angry, and I would hate that shop. Then I would tell myself I would never go back to that shop to buy anything. Then I would want my husband to approve me all the time to tell me that I am okay. Of course he would say I am okay. What else can he say? He would say it's okay. I, I, I have no problem. But in his voice, there is no excitement that I am okay. And so... What do you do in the event that you are not okay? Mind your health. Mind your health so much. Do the exercises. Eat right. And love yourself. And then share this love with another person. That is number one. Take care of yourself. Mind your health. Mind your looks. And when you are okay, you are confident, someone will return that love to you and you will also be able to love him back. Number two, when the marriage is on the rocks and the communication has died, check the way you speak. Many times people just issue words anyhow. You know, uh, someone is asking, is there food? It's not a restaurant. Don't just come and ask your wife, is there food? It's not a restaurant. I mean, she has come from work, you have come from work, and you're now asking her in that rude manner. Calm down. Ask her politely. Were you able to prepare something to eat today? Or we can plan. Okay? That's more kind. Asking, have you cooked anything for me? It's not about you, gentlemen. It's about us. It's about both of you. Ask, do we have anything in the house to eat? Some men will even go ahead and ask questions without minding the condition of the woman. You know, the poor lady is lying in the chair. You don't even know whether she's sick or, or she, she's not fine. You don't ask about that. You're asking. Everything seems to be around you, you, you. Take time and talk nicely. Find out why she is in the chair. Are you feeling well? How was your day today? Were you able to prepare something to eat or we can plan? 
And then she will go ahead and make that provision. Now, when it comes to ladies, the way they talk, sometimes the man has asked for food. Instead of realizing the man is hungry, he has just come to the house, he's hungry and he wants to eat. When he asks for food, you say, did you give me the money? Is this a restaurant that you're asking? Have you given me money for Kameza? Did you come with shopping? Or didn't you pass any restaurant? Some women will ask questions like that. Now let me tell you the shock that you will have because of poor communication. When your communication is not good at all, you will come from the rock to a very hard place and eventually there will be nothing that you will show off for that marriage. Let's take a break. See you after the break. at uh, the things that we can do to make us get out of the rock and the things originally which put us out of the put us on put our marriages on the rock and uh, I'll, I'll make a recap what we discussed before the break and this uh, number one we looked at um, the way we talk to each other can create the rock and so what do we need to do learn to communicate comfortably now, another thing that we'll look at, understand each other's love language. In this marriage, we do not take things for granted. Many times men think you, 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 you mistreat the wife, go buy her a gift, and after buying that gift, she will be okay. She will not be okay. She will not be okay because buying her a gift will not take away the pain. What you need to understand is if I have angered this lady, I have been unkind to her, I have not treated her well, what does she feel comfortable with to make her happy again? Some women will desire that you just say, oh, I'm sorry, and uh, you show her your, your, your heart by what she has done. And so if you say you're sorry, she may be okay, then the gift can come. Understand each other's love language and act like that, then the marriage will get off the rocks. Some ladies don't even think that uh, buying a husband a gift is, is, good, is, is necessary. Learn whether your husband uh, is, feels loved by talking to him, buying him gifts, you know, uh, being intimate, whether he likes uh, being uh, comforted, uh, so ladies, in most cases, they love being comforted. You know, they love being hugged. They like being assured. And then the gifts may come as uh, a secondary. Yet some ladies will love gifts. Or however much you have annoyed her, if you go and buy her that car, she will forget everything bad that you have said. So understand each other's language and act within that love language, and your marriage will be off the rocks. Okay? Now, ladies hold a big percentage in the marriage. Let me tell you, a lady controls how, how the marriage is going to be. Men will always respond to what the ladies have presented. In most cases, you find that if you are calm, if you are peaceful, if you know when to talk and when to keep quiet, you are going to avoid so many issues in this marriage. What should the ladies do to make sure that the marriages are off the, the, the rock? First and foremost, understand God's purpose for marriage. What is God's purpose for marriage? Okay, the Bible says, and a man shall leave his, his, his father and mother, be united to this wife, and the two shall become one. Then, for the ladies, they say, and the woman shall submit. Now, submission is a very powerful tool in the marriage. No man on the face of the earth will reject a submissive wife. Many times people misinterpret submission. They think being submissive is being a doormat. No, 
being a doormat and submission are not the same. Submission is humility with wisdom. Okay? You are humble, you are wise, you know what to do at any particular time. And when you operate in wisdom and in humility, that is an attraction to the man. For instance, why should you attack your husband? That is not submission. Why should you shout back? That is not submission. If he comes and he has raised his voice, you just keep quiet. It doesn't take away anything from you. Just keep quiet in submission, in wisdom, and then at an appropriate time. Find a way of chiseling through the walls that men create around them. Men create walls. Okay? They hide in there, in their ego. They are protected and they look like they are strong. When actually entering into that wall is submission. For instance, a lady who says, I feel um, unloved when you do not acknowledge the things I have done is very different from saying, you don't love me anymore. I cook for you, you don't even thank me. Those are the same statements, but presented in very different ways. And one statement will be accepted, the other one will create, will attract the man to create a more defense mechanism around him. Tell him, I feel unloved. Don't say, you don't love me anymore. And so, when you understand your wisdom and your humility, you will manage this marriage. Then I will do the last one and listen to this very carefully. How do you look, Madam Married Woman? You wake up in the morning, wrap a lace around you, the hair is not combed, you tie a wrapper, and uh, you've probably not brushed your teeth, you've woken up, you prepared the breakfast. He left you in that mood of Njagalanga Wendi, to whoever it may concern. And so he goes out there. Now, the image he lives with from the marriage, he goes to the office, he meets people who are well perfumed, who are well dressed, their dresses are fitting, and he sits with them. He comes back in the evening, you have done everything that you need to do, but you're still looking unkept. You know, the dress he left you in, maybe you went and showered and then you put on another huge dress, another huge change. It's like it can fit about three, four people together and you wear that one. Then you sit in the slippers. Then he walks in and uh, you are on your phone, and then where he left the chairs, they are unkept, and he finds you in the same way that he, that he left you. Men's emotions die slowly. As the same way that they are raised by looking at something, their emotions are raised by looking at something that is good, they are also killed by looking at something uninteresting. And so I will ask you, if you wake up in the morning, it doesn't cost you anything to brush your teeth quickly, wash your face, and wear something nice fitting, not, not, not your office dress, even if it is a chitenge, okay? I'm wearing a chitenge right now, but it is fitting. And then go in the kitchen, prepare something to eat for him, and let him go with that you in mind. And when he's coming back, dress nicely. It may be your home cloth, but it should be fitting, it should be clean. Perfume yourself. Don't wait to do your perfume when you are out there with the rest of the world. Perfume yourself, and when this man comes home, let him like what he is seeing. And you will find eventually that there is no more rock in your marriage. Women, I will come back to you. You have the key to making marriage. Men normally fall for what they see. And so when they get to that position that he is in a rock, it is time that you wake up 
and realize that you can do, you can make the soil easier. I want to take you to uh, a break, and during this break, we will make one home remedy that is very healthy, that is very time-keeping, that will help you not to stress that, you know, both of you have come from the work and you cannot help yourself. This is something that every lady must know. During every session, we will be doing one home remedy that a lady can do that will help them to build a better relationship. Join me as we make this home remedy. Welcome to our home remedy section. Uh, these are things that we need to do as ladies so that when our, our husbands come in the house, you have something ready to give to them. You don't have to go and make the juice as soon as he has come in the house. No, these things should be ready and kept. Now, the difference between this juice that we are making and the normal juices that you know is that this one we are going to extract the, the, the juices from the, fruit, from the vegetables. As you can see, I'm emphasizing the vegetables, carrot and, and uh, cucumber, and I'm sweetening it with this apple. I always avoid juicing too much uh, of the fruits. Actually, fruits you can eat, but the vegetables, you can juice them. That is when you get the live enzymes. Now, these vegetables that we are going to make, we are going to freeze them. Because we are not putting in water, we are going to freeze them. Any juice or any vegetable that is frozen is kept with its live enzymes at any particular time that you need it. You can even keep them for a week. And so any particular time that you need those juices, you just pick a, 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 a cube, put in the water, and then you juice them, then you, you drink. In that way, your husband, your children will remain fresh, taking fresh things rather than running for supermarket uh, goods. Okay, now, whenever you're doing these things, make sure that you emphasize cleanliness, otherwise you will get your people sick. These fruits are washed with water and vinegar, boiled water, drinking water and vinegar. And uh, this same vinegar is for washing. I've already sanitized my hands, but I'll sanitize them again so that when I touch these fruits, they are safe. My hands are not, uh, are not in, going to be the cause of the problem. There are different types of, of juices, but this is the one that I have. Okay, so we put in our cucumber. Then we turn on. As you can see, there is no water, but we are, we are extracting juice from our cucumber. And, and you can feel free to put in anything else that you that you feel is very difficult for you to eat. For instance, I am not so good with eating nakati. But I know that it is important. I know that nakati is important. We must have them. In the event that you're, you cannot eat it boiled and your children do not like it, then it is important for you to eat. It is important for you to, to drink it. When you drink it, you get all the benefits, but it will also be, be interesting for, for the young and the old. and from one apple which I use as a sweetener. If you have a sweet tooth, it is at this stage that you will put in a spoon of honey. And when you put a spoon of honey, it, it also acts as a preservative. Apart from sweetening, it is antiviral, it acts as a preservative. What are the benefits of you feeding your family with this juice? First and foremost, this juice is a anti-cancer, this juice uh, will help you to 
for women who have you know belly fat it will help you as well this juice will help you with your colon you know it repairs colon and helps the colon movement it has vitamin it has everything good that you need and so this is just what i'm going to do i will mix it with this spoon i'll mix it properly you can see it is in layers the carrot had separated from the cucumber and the apple here had all separated so after mixing you pour um, sorry, you sort out this i don't want it to spill so after doing that you put in the ice cubes straight away if you keep it down in the fridge and you put in water after one hour that juice is going to be useless now instead of fighting in the marriage because the husband has asked for juice after returning from work keep this and so when it is frozen during the course of the evening as you return home or in the morning you will pick one two three ice cubes put them in a glass of water and put in water and then he will be drinking fresh juice just like you look at it here the children will love it your husband will love it and you yourself will love it i know women you like um, doing very many good things for others and you forget about yourself but this is a marriage hack that will get your marriage from stress to being enjoyable Thank you so much for watching this show. Uh, I hope you have learned so much and you're going to build strong and beautiful homes and catch you, catch with me, join me next Sunday as we learn together and grow together. Bye-bye.